I know what you're thinking, but Drebin does have a point. The world depends on war, on the war economy. Can you imagine what would happen if war just disappeared overnight? Otacon, you and Drebin both mentioned something about a war price earlier. What did you mean by that? It's a kind of market price, one that fluctuates according to demand, not only for PMCs and military industry, but for the production, distribution, and energy supply networks that support them. Hmm. It's been growing by leaps and bounds, and investors are really starting to take notice. As the fighting in any given area becomes increasingly intense and prolonged, the war price goes up. No doubt Drebin's rates are linked to that war price. The longer and bloodier a battle becomes, the higher service prices are gonna get. To put it another way, the quieter things are, the better the bargains. Snake, we'll use the Mark II to deal with Drebin from here on out. He's what you might call a street vendor. The Mark II can act as a kind of delivery boy, connect you with it. I'm adding a Drebin menu item to the Mark II's weapon menu. Whenever you pick up multiple units of the same weapon, any extras will automatically be sold to Drebin. Any ammo that's inside gets added to your cache. In other words, you keep the ammo, and the weapon itself gets traded to Drebin for points. I see. You can then use the points you've earned to unlock ID guns or buy new weapons. Sounds good. We should assume Drebin has other agents collecting guns for him besides you, Snake. You know, freelance green collars who collect weapons in exchange for services? Guess I'll have to rely on him for now. Okay. Now go meet up with our informants, Rat Patrol. All right. What a long, amazing cutscene, of course. Snake, hurry and get to the rendezvous point with our informants. First, you'll have to get to the other side of that collapsed building. The only way across is straight through. So now you can see the weapons that uh, we already have or we don't need are going to be added to our money, which in turn uh, is exchanged for goods and services. It's a good system, and I like this system, but as a stealth player, we are in no need of this system. Obviously. And of Careful course, there's snake. other stuff the walls could come down any second. that we could get, but we don't need everything. And I also like one thing about this level is that there's different ways that you can go and you'll see the cutscenes differently depending on which way you go, which is a really cool effect. I don't think we can get into that, can we? Yeah. Pick up stuff here and there. Not that we really needed it, but... And this is actually where I was talking about. Depending on which way you go, if you drop down right there, you can actually see a cutscene from one angle. And if you go this way, you can see it from another one. So we're just going to go this way and change things up a little bit. Not that there's a real need for it, but it lets you pick up different stuff.
All right, so now that we got our trusty drum, first thing you want to do, because we will be caught by the militiamen still because we have not helped them out, period. So go ahead and change to your enemy disguise. Okay, Snake. Hurry to the rendezvous point. Your radar is marked with which way to go. So this is all going to be about sneaking. Timing is also uh, kind of crucial when you get to a little bit later. Let's bring back so many good memories. I don't know how many times I've played this game. And it's, just, it's so fun getting the chance to go over it again. It's a daunting task to try to complete it boss extreme, but we're up for it. So with this, just remain quiet still. Try to stick as close to this edge as you can so the guard there doesn't see you. And you can get by him like a glove. some guards there you can easily get by them here however the next few guards can be a little tricky to get by almost uh, overshot it there Alright, so that's how you get by those guys without having to do any distractions. It's random damage here, so... Alright, so I know we didn't make that through um, perfectly, obviously we took a little bit of damage, but there was really nothing that we could do. And plus, you can get pretty much all of that right back up there. Now, however, you do have to watch out for bombs and whatnot here. Um, I do believe that if you just stay kind of down like this, you can get... I, I think you can get it all the way back up, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, also in this area, there's some um, audio logs that you can do. Um, if you guys want and you request and you would like to see some of the uh, integral podcasts for the different areas, please let me know as I have all of those and I can definitely hook you guys up with those as well. You can see there's a claymore here. I'm going to go and try to pick up as much, as, as much of the claymores as I can. So as long as you do it from like this, then you're fine. You can pick up all the claymores that you see. You can see right now we're just kind of looking around. And of course, besides claymores, these these things right here, which don't actually kill you. So we're just gonna take our time and make sure we grab as much stuff as we can. Of course, if you get too careless, then uh, you can die, so. I always find the next uh, boss battle up ahead as a pretty fun boss battle to actually go against. Right now, I don't remember where all of the claymores are, so that's why I'm kind of taking my time. Because I really don't remember where they all are.
Yes, and if I believe this is kind of the way that you can go um, Snake, later. Snake, I'm detecting a trap in your vicinity. It's a bomb that uses an infrared sensor as a detonation trigger. It's a remote control device, and I'm detecting slight traces of volatile sleep gas. Trigger it, and you'll be knocked out, so be careful. Well, you can see different ways. Obviously, there's things we're probably not going to pick up, but just wanted to show you some of the stuff that's around. As there are plenty of walkthroughs out there that achieve 100% of everything, so there's no need to go over all of that again. I'm just keeping a lookout for claymores and all that. Uh, plus, it's probably a good thing to go ahead and grab as many claymores as you can, so when you're coming back through here, when you're fighting, um, whatever they're called, I, I forgot what they're actually called. They're all females, though. Might make things a little bit easier and more bearable. Even though we technically don't need really any of this stuff. Alright, we're almost to another long cinematic. I want to thank everybody for watching so far. Hopefully you're getting something out of it. Hopefully you're enjoying it. We're playing Metal Gear Solid, so you damn well better be. <laughs> Such an amazing game. Now what's cool about this section here is you can go in this little vent right there. That'll actually take you to a lower part of the map as well. So when you're coming through here, you could probably go through here and you know we might as well go through there just to show you guys what's there. But uh, it'll drop you down to a, a lower section when you're fighting against the other enemies. But as you can see, there's nothing real. There's no need to go in here unless you want to actually go down. So there's there's no point in it. But I just wanted to at least show you. And of course, there could be things that I'm missing as well. So if I am, please feel free to let me know in the comments below so that others know where everything, where all the little things are, so they can get the most out of the game as well. I think there's another one around here somewhere. I'm just being safe. Oh, maybe there's not. Alright, well, ladies and gents, that's gonna do it. Uh, we no longer need this disguise, really, so we're gonna go ahead and switch back. And I gotta say, let's get something a little different. Let's get this pattern. And it is time to continue on. Hopefully you're enjoying it so far, and hopefully you enjoy the next cutscene.